Okay. We're alive. And I'm gonna be working on some uh, some more physics stuff. Although I think I'm actually kind of running out of physics stuff to work on. Yeah, here we go. Um. Yeah. This whole automatically share shapes when multiple entities use the same color data and material. I'm not gonna do that because that's. I think that's just gonna cause more problems. Um. Using aggregates for dynamic mesh actors is not needed right now because we don't have any performance issues with the simulation. So I'm um, getting rid of that. <clears throat> More control over convex versus triangle collider. Um, I kind of don't think... I don't think that the user should ever have to worry about triangle vers versus convex mesh colliders. Uh, that should just be handled by the engine. Uh, currently the way that works is... Dynamic mesh collide... well, dynamic meshes, rather... Um, are always... Convex, I think? Um... And take a look at that in here. Yeah, static meshes are always triangles, and dynamic meshes are always convex, which I don't know why Jan decided to do that, because that doesn't make any sense. Um, you can definitely have a dynamic triangle mesh. Um, Uh, but yeah, so we're going to need a way to kind of either automatically detect if a mesh is convex or triangle, uh, or, or concave. Thing is though, I kind of like the way Unreal handles this, because they first of all do some automatic detection. kind of figure out if it's convex or not. Um, but then they have uh, what they call simple and complex mesh colliders. And a simple mesh collider, I think, is always a triangle mesh. Um, whereas the complex one can be convex and therefore simulated, because triangle meshes cannot actually be properly simulated. Uh, One second. Okay. Um, yeah. They basically have complex and simple mesh colliders. One is triangle, one is convex. I think. Unless you use this com complex one as a simple one, which is, generally speaking, not good. But today, I'm going to be working sort of on some more sharing of shapes. The thing is, though, it's not going to be automatic. I want to make it so that... Um, allow Mesh Collider Asset to set all components to use shared shapes. Basically, if we take a look in the Collider Editor, we want to have
Hang on. She'll be fine now. It's not that it's muting. Hang on. Okay. So yeah, it, it should be fine. Yeah, the problem is whenever I open the Mesh Collider editor, the sound from my microphone just stops for some reason. And I don't know why. Doesn't make any sense, but that's... That's just what it is. The ghost in the machine, pretty much, yeah. Um, we accidentally discovered that previously. Um, because someone else thought that I had muted. But, yeah. That, it's super annoying because... I want to work on it on stream. And if it mutes my mic, that's a problem. But yeah, so I'm basically gonna add a little option to that screen that says always share shape. Um, color debug mesh for a selected actor. Not sure how useful that is. Especially with the uh, new collider editor. Now, Mesh Collider Asset. Also, I added this little preview scale to kind of let you adjust the scale of the preview entity because you may want to do that. Also, one other thing, inside of scene, where we do render physics debug, I don't think the mesh collider component, the kind of debug uh, mesh here, I don't think its transform should take the entity scale into account. We should effectively build we should effectively use the scale of the actual mesh because otherwise it will not give an accurate representation of the collider I don't think well will it? it might actually because if we take a look at physics shapes we do in fact account for the entity scale which is correct. So yeah, I guess it should take the entity transform into account. And I assume that these multiply by the submesh transform. Yeah, they do. So that's actually yeah, no, we don't need to do that. But yeah, so let's have a boolean. Uh, always share shape. I would default as false. Probably. Um, let's go ahead and make sure we serialize it. in my uh, pinky finger, so kind of hurts a bit when I press shift. 
not sure why. So, settings panel, I should probably split these into... Yeah, I should definitely split these into separate functions. Um, Assist have a way, yep, extract method. Cannot extract method from selected text while well, that's annoying. Render its settings. Yes, it's technically a tab, but let's do render settings panel. And render viewport panel. Probably why I couldn't do it. Because I had the wrong scope selected. Take it down there. Settings panel name. Right, yeah. Um. We can probably create these kind of as part of the tab dot, I think. And it's docking, so... Kind of have it as cons, though. If we need... To create it through the constructor then, which I don't want to do, so whatever. Uh, settings, panel, name. Probably not the optimal way to do things, but I don't care. doing this for organizational purposes. Let's 
make sure we apply it then. So under Probably in physics shapes. It's where we should do it, right? Because we have component U shared shape. Um, let's switch. Let's do this instead. U shared shape is equal to that or lighter asset always shared shape. Right, I think that's what we want. And that's not correct. And we can probably mark it cons just to be nice. Hmm, then we have this component user. Um I mean we could probably just assign this to be true. Uh, inside of Scenarica panel. Where is it? Somewhere around here. Capsule. Match collider. Right, so when we assign this, and I can get rid of this code. What I can do is if what's up, Declan CD? So we can quickly grab the actual collider asset. And we do if collider asset because it could be null and collider asset always share shape. Use this equal to true. Right, we force that to always be true here. Um, and in here we could potentially disable this if that's set on the collider asset. Yeah, I think that's a good way of dealing with it. So grab the asset, we do... Uh, begin disabled. Collider asset and collider... Thank you for the auto-completion. Also, why does it do that? For some reason, wants to format it, these and statements like that, which is dumb. And disable because that way in here we can actually revert this completely. Um, also, I will be back in a few minutes.
I wanna say something, but you are all that I see. You got dynamite, that smile's gonna be the end of me. I bet you taste like chocolate. Can I have it for free? I'm an explosion, that smile's gonna be the end of me. I wanna say something, but you are all that I see. You got dynamite, that smile's gonna be the end of me. I bet you taste like chocolate. Can I have it for free? I'm an explosion. gonna be gonna be the end of me i wanna say something but you are all that i see you got dynamite that smile's gonna be the end of me i bet you taste like chocolate can i have it for free i'm an explosion and that smile's gonna be the end of me you cannot lie over a my tie you cannot lie over a my tie you cannot lie over a my tie let's check each other out something but you are all that i see you got dynamite that smile's gonna be the end of me i bet you taste like chocolate can i have it for free i'm an explosion that smile's gonna be the end of me i wanna say something but you are all that i see you got dynamite that smile's gonna be the end of me i bet you taste like chocolate can i have it for free i'm an explosion and that smile's gonna be the that smile, that smile's gonna be the end. I wanna say something, but you are all that I see. You got dynamite, that smile's gonna be the end of me. I bet you taste like chocolate. Can I have it for free? I'm an explosion, that smile's gonna be the end of me.
And I'm back. Just had to take care of some things. Um, so yeah, this should actually work now. I think. Well, not always though. It will work if you manually set the asset here, but it won't work if you drag a mesh into the scene. So that should be pretty easy to get set up. Um, Instantiate mesh and it's in here, right? So if well, I guess here we could just do an assignment to be honest. Um, is shared shape equals. Yeah, that should be fine now. So if we tell, now this won't update. This won't affect colliders that are already in the scene. So if I say open up an existing collider asset and set always share shape to true, that won't take effect on all the other ones. But that's easy to set up. Hang on. Okay, yeah, the microphone is not muted. So... <clears throat> okay. That's shutter left. So... If I... Take your shutter. Okay. It's this one that we should be using. So if I come in here and just give it this one, we do see that gets grayed out. If I duplicate this, they should use the same one in theory. Let's take this and let's drop it. Okay. It seems to be working. Cool. Uh, one change I'm going to make real quick is... change this to say needs saving but not cooking because we don't need to cook the mesh again 
if we do this, which is kind of why I think they should not, it shouldn't be in cooking settings. It should probably be here, maybe. Um, we may want like a separate kind of collider settings for things that don't necessarily apply to the data, but to the collider itself. Yeah, let's do that. valid mesh. Same thing with the cooking settings. Um, it would only be if we have a valid mesh. That should now work. Um, so, uh, why aren't you using you as code style instead of UI? Oh, hang on. Did I? Oh, yeah, it's unnamed. Uh, frame padding. We usually do this where we kind of name it after the style that we want to apply. I just tend to forget to actually give them a name. And yeah, that would generate a warning. Because it's unnamed. So thank you, Bojosos, for catching that. Um, again, here we could just do another scope style. Because this does apply to the entire viewport there we go um 
Here I can't use scope styles. But that's fine. You don't always need to do that. Okay. Um if I wanted this hang on. If I wanted this change to take effect on pre-existing colliders we'd have to say we'd actually need to go through all of the entities in the scene that has a mesh collider and apply it there And I think we do want to do that. Um, the question is, how do we get that? We'd have to take in... Hmm, yeah, how do we get that scene though? Because it's the editor scene that we need to get. Um... Don't suppose Asset Editor has that info. No. Um. And we register the editors here. We could add a set scene context method potentially because I think all of this is actually where is this method called it's called from editor layer so we could add a set scene context um, method Which could actually be kind of handy. I think we're gonna have that. Um, set scene context. This can take in const reference. Should this be... We could potentially just store the scene context in here. Um, but I don't think... Like, not all panels will need it, so... We can just have it here and override it. Uh, so, in here. Don't need that. Well, this is kind of the active scene though, because it could be the wrong time scene. Um, but we can easily check that. So let's rename it to... In fact, this should probably only happen if... If, the, if we're setting it as the... Uh, editor scene so if context is editor scene because we don't want to edit the colliders in the runtime I think that could potentially cause quite a few problems That way, in here, we can probably have a 
um, save. Let's just call it save. And we need to know which tab it is. Because this will actually go through and do. Where do we have that save button? Here. They should probably be underneath the preview settings, though. Right. Um. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I kind of don't like the fact that we're doing this. Um. So why don't I just do this? Because previous settings could only happen if we have a valid mesh, apparently. Sure, whatever. these to be visible at all times though well no well maybe hmm. the save button we may want to kind of always show um but yeah no Let's not. And we'll grab this and we'll call. Actually, let's take all this and call save. Let's have data. That in there. We cook it. We serialize it. We do that. But before we do that, uh, we come in here. We do auto view. Get all entities with a mesh collider component. Otherwise, we apply the data here. So, mesh collider dot use shared shape. Omar King, thank you for following. What's up? 
house things. So, I could just do an assignment here. Set it equal to that. Is that way if we disable it and this is enabled? Yeah, I think we will that. Anything else that we'll need to copy over? Don't need material. Yeah, no, that should be good for now. So, assuming I've done everything correctly, uh, what's the project you're working on? It's the uh, Hazel Game Engine. Let's see if I have a command for it. Do I not? I don't have a command for it. Uh, but yeah, it's the Hazel Game Engine uh, that I'm working on right now. Which is a game engine developed by... Uh, well, initially made by the Cherno uh, on YouTube. And now we kind of have quite a big team working on it. So that is what I'm working on, and specifically what I'm working on is just physics, uh, some physics colliders uh, stuff. that will apply correctly. So now we just have to call the um, set scene context, I suppose. Let's see where we do that. We do it in on scene play, which I suppose we should do. I said editor panel. Runtime scene. Where, um, where did I go? There we are. And editor scene. Why does the script engine need the viewport renderer? Why do we need the scene renderer in here? Oh yeah, I, I remember it's because we need access to it from the scripting engine. This should not be necessary. We do all the simulation stuff because we don't do scripting. We probably want to set the context for the asset editor panels. Is that all the places? In stop. Scene transition. I don't know that we want to do it in there, to be honest. And we do it here. There's quite a few places where we do this. I think that's it though. In transition, close project, new scene, open scene. Yeah. Okay. Now we can. Finally tested. S 
question is when do we register all of the panels because they may not actually have gotten I don't know if this will work um, but if we jump in here uh, shutter left we, no that's not what I wanted to drag that one, we give it that collider. That data pie. Okay, cool. So we can now control that from a single asset, which is what we want. Question is, should we be able to disable it? for a certain we may want an override for it eventually um i don't think okay nice um right because we do set it to null pointer so um let's just do if null context because we do actually need to free this up. Otherwise, the scene won't be cleaned up. Which probably means that we should do it in on-scene transition as well. Because otherwise, the old scene won't be freed. Yeah, definitely. Man, I think I have a cold because I'm sneezing like crazy. Okay. Mm, sure, whatever, mate. That is that done. More control over convex versus triangle collider. Now, we kind of have two ways to go here. We could go with the Unreal approach, where we have a complex and a simple collider. And I think in Unreal, a... Uh, I, I had this open at some point in their code, but... Not right now. Let's see. Unreal Engine. Simple versus co complex mesh collider. Let's see if they say anything in here. Static mesh editors details collision complexity. Simple shapes for real scene queries and collision tests. Complex, which is for complex scene queries. Okay, yes. Doesn't really tell me anything though. Um, but do we use the same kind of system as Unreal already, where we kind of. Hmm. Static match versus. Because they have static and skeletal mesh, which is... We don't currently have that exact definition. Um, okay, that's weird. Check this one instead. Uh, static, no animation, no rig. Uh, okay, that doesn't help either. So I'm not sure how Unreal handles this. In detail, they may support convex and triangle meshes for static meshes, but for skeletal meshes, they may only support convex, which does make a lot of sense. Um, I think Unity handles this completely automatically, 
What we could do is inside of the cooking factory, we could say that, okay, if it's a static mesh, we can have either a triangle mesh or a convex mesh. But for non-static meshes, they have to be convex because I think the idea is that for non-static meshes in the future would is kind of what animation will be supporting um and so the difference between a triangle and a convex mesh in physics is that a triangle mesh cannot be on a non-kinematic dynamic rigid body meaning a, a triangle mesh can never be used to actually like move a character if a character has a triangle mesh you cannot apply forces Whereas with a convex mesh, you can, right? If we take a look in animation here. Um, let's see, animation. Um, is, is it skeleton that we want to take a look at? I think this is just a basic data structure. Uh, take some mesh source. So you can have animations. Okay, but either way, I think static meshes should support both triangle and convex meshes. Um, and non-static should only be convex. Or should it? See, the thing is, I did not make this decision to have this limitation. That was Jan, so I don't know why he did that. Uh, I know one big deal is that... Convex meshes... Wait, hang on. I'm confused. a bit confused. Um, okay, so this only runs for dynamic meshes. Right. Exactly. Um, That's interesting. But yeah, why don't we support triangle meshes for these? That doesn't make any sense. They can definitely be triangle meshes. That's kind of dumb. Okay. I'm actually gonna have to dig into how Unreal handles this. Because that's gonna be annoying. Because I know on their GitHub page... Um... Okay. Unreal. Uh, Unreal. Um... Order set up, maybe? Yeah, here we go. Um, if... 
Yeah, because if it has any convex geometry, it uh, tries and do it as a convex flag, well, as a convex mesh. Otherwise, it tries to do it as a triangle mesh. Question is, is this called for all kinds of meshes? derived thought I think it is build I see this doesn't really help Let's read through the code a bit. I don't think this is really gonna help us. But I do think we should support triangle meshes for both static and dynamic meshes. We could set it up so... Where am I? Because the thing is, even here we do like static mesh versus non-static mesh. Which doesn't make any sense, I don't think. We could say that for static meshes we will prefer triangle meshes, so only if this fails we will try and do a convex. Whereas for dynamic meshes we will try convex first and then do a triangle mesh if that fails. To be honest, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold off on doing this change and I'm gonna have a word with Jan to see why he did this and kind of what, like why can dynamic meshes only be convex? Because that's obviously not true in terms of the actual geometry, right? In terms of the geometry, you know, it could be any mesh and I think we should support that. So, show collider debug mesh for a selected actor. Is that useful in any way whatsoever? I think Unity does this. Um, if you select a game object that has a collider, it will show the debug mesh. And I think that's kind of the only way you can view debug meshes. Or uh, colliders, sorry. Whereas we do it a bit differently, we have a setting where we can show physics colliders and why... See, this is a bit annoying. This is using test. But it hasn't cooked it. For some dumb reason. Um,
then we get it. So it hasn't actually cooked. That's a bug we can try and track down. Um, fix mesh collider assets. Not being cooked on load. Um, so yeah, we can do this. We can do control P toggle. But if I select this, should it show it? Or do we just keep like the regular toggle? We could add another option here. Kind of have it default to show selected only. Yeah, that thing with the microphone and the mesh collider editor is super weird. Um, I don't know why that's happening. Um, what? RH2100, thank you for following. Also, my mouse is... Weird. Yeah, this is no point. Oh, we never return. Whoops. My bad. But yeah, no, that's super weird. Um, I don't know why that would ever happen. It could be a bug with the audio, um, the audio system. So maybe it's because we don't have like a, um, a listener in the scene, but no, that shouldn't matter, I don't think. Um, and it shouldn't affect my microphone. I think it's just that for some reason it, it just screw something up somewhere in my computer. Super annoying. Let's actually do a quick test because my editor is very similar to the mesh viewer. So if I open up the mesh viewer, we'll see if the microphone gets cut off as well. So search for GLTF. So when I open this, We'll see if you'll have to let me know if microphone cuts out. Okay, so it does seem like that messes it up as well. Because I could see the... Uh, yeah, it does. That is so weird. I'm gonna have to look into that at some point. I can't be bothered doing it now, though. Um... Still Valanish, thank you for following. So, okay, let's have these, like that. And let's have the default be selected entity, which I'll do one, two, three. Um, normal, let's maybe set this to toggle, and then toggle on top. Well, no, because that's... you can't toggle to that one. Um, let's have selected entity be the default in here. Um, and then in scene... I think it is. Uh, render physics debug. If it's not equal to none, we call this, but... I don't actually see where the on top one is used. It isn't. That's that's why. Okay, so that's interesting. Let's do in scene. We can probably put that in here. So we can do if render yet config. What is it called? Okay. 
get options, show physics colliders. What I'm thinking is we do this. Just always call this. And then in here, we'll do uh, which is of type scene render options physics collider view. If collider view is equal to none, we fail. If All right, and this is where it kind of gets a bit difficult because we will have to do this code, but only for the selected entity. If collider view is equal to selected entity, otherwise we do this and if it is only the selected entity, we need to check that we do have one selected. Get selection count for the scene. If that is zero, we fail. Otherwise, we do this, but we need to, well, we actually need to do this for all selected entities. So we need to do four. And I forget the syntax, it's selection manager, get selection. No, get selections. Yep. And it's scene context and that returns a vector of UUIDs. Okay. So you can do four auto entity ID in that. Because we don't care about the index. So we don't need to do a normal for loop. We put that in there and this is the scene like Hazel's entity ID. So, let's do get entity with UUID, because it should be in this scene context, I think. And instead of doing that, we do if entity has component. We grab that. So it's basically going to be this for all of these. We don't need the view, we don't need a for loop, we don't need that. Okay. 
again. And that should be it. Now, the only thing is I need to make sure that we get rid of all of these. Now we do check in here. Cool. In, I think we still need to modify in here where we do. Uh, it's UI viewport settings. So it's selected entity, um, all, and show on top. And the important here, thing here is that they're in the right order. Now show on top is not actually used. Um, not sure why. Right. Um, that to all. Cool. Guess it failed to rename. Which is mildly annoying. Eternal 92 mode, thanks for following. Don't see where we even use. Oh, it's probably this. Let's give it a build again. Yep. So the default should always be this selected entity only. And it is. Now this could potentially get a bit annoying. And it is... Is it rendering on top of everything? By default? If I select that, yeah, it is. Huh. That shouldn't actually be the case. I don't think. Although there may not be a way of changing that right now. 
If it's not none, we do this. Pipeline geometry wireframe. Oh, it's selecting the on top pipeline. Right, that's how we did it. Um, I think I'm gonna reorder this a bit. Because we know it's not none, which means it has to either be selected entity, all, or on top. So let's reorder this to be like that. And I think it's, yeah. So that's why. Good thing we caught that early on because I hate debugging graphics because I suck at it. Okay, now it's no longer rendering on top. Good. Now we may or may not want this to be the case. Um, I think Unity does this. Um, well, I don't know if they do. Oh, that's cool. We see the outline kind of cut off there. Unfortunately, I don't have Unity installed, I don't think. No, I don't. And I don't think I have Unreal installed anymore either. Uh, no. Hmm. Yeah, I'm really not sure if we want this. Because, like, if you want to modify the material, this could get a bit, like, the wireframe could get in the way, potentially. I mean, if I select the cube, and we do... I don't know, I think it's fine for now, and you can always come in here and just hide it, which does work. If we do all, we see all of them. And apparently I got rid of the on top option, which I shouldn't have. Where was it? Editor layer. Oh no, I didn't get rid of it, I just forgot to update this. This is a 4. Now, the downside is, if I do control P now, nothing will happen. Um... We may want to toggle it between... Oh, that is... It looks super weird with the fog enabled. Hey? Okay, there we are. Get confused. Yeah, so control P no longer does anything if... But like by default, unless you change it like this. And then it will toggle it. Um, we may want it to toggle between, um, the currently, like, selected option and hidden. So maybe this is kind of the mode. Instead of having hide here, we have selected until all show on top. And then control P simply sets a boolean. Yeah, I think I actually want that. Um... We'll get rid of that. We'll do Alt Shift R. Um, collider yeah, physics collider mode, and we'll have a show physics colliders. 
enabled by default. Unity goes uh, draws them on top, but theirs are much thinner. That could definitely be the case, and we may want to tweak the width of the lines. Um, but for now, I like it's not a big deal right now. Obviously, stuff like this can be tweaked to no end. Um, um, glider mode. This is glider mode. Sure. Let's call it that, and we now only have three options. And we may want show on top to be a separate boolean as well at some point. Because you may want to show the selected entry, but show them on top. Now I'm going to have to tweak this in here and get rid of this one. I think I may only need to tweak this and uh, the scene renderer potentially. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this as well. If M options dot no physics colliders. That should be it. And after I've done this, I'm gonna try and hunt down that little bug that makes it so we don't cook uh, match collider assets when we Load a scene. Okay. Um, if show physics colliders. And in here we will do Do we even need this? Oh, yeah, I think so. But, well, this is going to be quite simplified. Because we will simply do... This. Can now disable that. Yeah, 
and if you want to change the mode okay and now if I yeah so I like that a lot more that's much much better also it's kind of funny because none of these settings are currently serialized um, I should probably get on that and I hate that clicking this doesn't let you close it that doesn't matter so let's try and find that bug um, most likely what's happening is well hmm we could potentially fix this by just going into the asset serializer and say in try load data we load all of this in and then we just call cooking factory cook mesh with uh, actually we can't do this here that's a bit of a problem because I think by the time this like hmm I don't think we can call that in there. Because it won't have been added. To this map. And Cook Mesh tries to load this asset. We may have to do it in here, which I don't really mind. We grab this. Wait. What? So we only cook it if it Hang on, what? We are cooking it. No. We're only cooking it if... If it's a memory only asset. We actually want to do this regardless. So I think that's the cause. fixed it now we can check that cool okay um what am I gonna work on now because I've basically done everything that I wanted to do for now at least um, I can't do this let's rename this as well um, to... <laughs> because it's not more control, it's more like we need to be better at deciding, the engine needs to be better at deciding convex versus triangle. Um, select triangle versus convex collider based on something. <laughs> Well, no, it's more like support, convex, and triangle colliders for all match types. Or rather for both dynamic and static 
meshes. And I hope that saved. Yes, because Notion is awesome and auto saves. Um, and I can't work on that right now because I need to have a word with Jan. Uh, J. Marceno. Marceno? Uh, thanks for following. Uh, Unity has convex checkbook. Yeah, we used to have that as well. And that kind of leaves it up to the user to determine if their mesh is convex or concave. Um, the thing is, though, we removed that because... I don't know, reasons, uh, Jan kind of got rid of that, uh, because I did initially design our uh, mesh colliders to be similar to Unity, and we kind of added that. Yeah, uh, convex colliders, only on static mesh, and then has some weird comp- Yeah, so the complex versus triangle mesh, uh, or the complex versus simple uh, setting, is literally just... Um, if the simple collider is Unreal kind of generating a simplified convex collider for use in, say, collision tests. Um, whereas the complex uh, mesh collider is, I think it's only used for more complex scene queries like ray costs. So that that's really all that does. Um, Unreal lets you add convex sliders only on static mesh. That's kind of weird though. Because... Well, no, I guess it's not. Because the thing is... Triangle mesh... If you have a triangle collider... On an actor... It has to either be static or kinematic. Right? So you can't add forces to it. Um... Yeah. Um... Wait. Only convex colliders on static mesh. So in Unreal you can't have a triangle collider on a static mesh. That sounds weird. Because that's essentially what triangle meshes are used for. Since you can't deal with forces when using a triangle collider. That's definitely weird. Oh, here we have a link. Let's see. Setting up. Okay. Uh, I have started my shares. Or move throughout your level using a mat. Okay, using a mat knee, so that's different. And why did the music stop? Because we have listened through the entire thing. Uh, let's listen to this one instead. Because I really want to kind of wrap my head around this. Um, you do not want to have the player be able to walk or shoot through the mesh. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Static mesh editor. There is no collision. Okay. Air capsule box, yep. Makes sense. So, here we have it. Because this is a... This is a convex mesh. Right? Even though arguably a concave would make more sense there.
they don't even seem to support triangle. Well, yeah, they don't actually seem to support triangle colliders. Or static meshes. So, that's weird. Um... Yeah, that's very weird. Um, so, because triangle meshes do make sense for skeletal meshes, because a skeletal mesh would most likely use um, a dynamic and kinematic actor, which means you can have, because it's kinematic, you can have triangle colliders on it. So that makes a lot of sense. But for a static mesh? Uh, well, I guess, yeah, static mesh just implies it's not a skeletal mesh. We don't have that distinction, even in the animation branch, because that just takes a mesh source, I think. Problem is, I'm not very familiar with the animation stuff either. Um, If we take a look in here and we look for animation, which isn't thing, seriously? I assume we have an animation component. We don't wrong oh wrong branch yeah so Well, that didn't really help. What I can do, I guess, is... Go under... I think it's Render... Mesh. Let's see, because we have... The Mesh Source. Which... Does store bone information and has a skeleton. The port skeletal animation retains hierarchy. No skeletal animations flatten hierarchy. Okay. So I think what I'm gonna do is static mesh will support both triangle No. Yeah, no, this actually does make quite a bit of sense now. Although I still think dynamic meshes should, should support. Actually, we kind of have it incorrect the way we have it right now. Because we kind of have it flipped. Static meshes have triangle meshes, which shouldn't be the case. Since triangle meshes are often used with skeletal meshes, um, and skeletal meshes can only exist in this one. So that is actually incorrect. I actually wonder if Xerox has updated this in, um, in this branch. If we take a look. Apparently no. Okay. We should flip these. Technically. 
to be like that. And then this will be, you know, static mesh. And this would be a regular mesh. Since these can't have animation, but these can. And triangle meshes are great for skeletal animations. Since you wouldn't have like a dynamic rigid body. This would break a lot of collider caches. And I think we should have an option to clear to rebuild the collider cache completely. Or to at least clear it. Yeah. Because if we change this, you would definitely have to rebuild the Collider Cache. And I think, since I'm in charge of physics, and it does seem like these... Um, and it does seem like static meshes do not have animations, that means they should have convex. So this is completely flipped the wrong way around. Okay, good. So I have a new thing that I can work on. First of all, let's say... Um, add button for clearing the collider cache, or maybe even like rebuilding it, I think could also be useful. Um, clearing and rebuilding the collider cache. Well, rebuilding will kind of be done automatically, I think. But let's, let's have that. And we'll say switch which the keyboard's in the wrong place uh, switch static meshes this is gonna break a lot of games though to use convex mesh colliders and switch dynamic meshes to use triangle mesh colliders just gonna check real quick in the uh, physics stokes triangle Triangle meshes. Because, hmm. Yeah, we may want to use simpler. Mm -hmm.
Wait, did they just not support mesh colliders at all? Uh, what type of draw commands do Hazel use for regular meshes? Indirect. Um, good question. Not really um, the best person here to mention that. Um. I don't know if it's indirect or what it is. We create a random command buffer here, which I think is, and that's not what I want. Um, Yeah, I don't know if we use indirect rendering for it. Like, I do know we have like instance rendering, but I don't think that's really relevant to that question. That's not helpful. Okay, yeah, I don't know what the good best way of handling this is. In my head, it makes sense for skeletal meshes to use triangle meshes or primitive types like box colliders or capsule colliders. But I may need to have a word with with Zero X about that. And Yawn, possibly. That's so annoying. I just wanna go in and fix that stuff. Okay, well, at the very least, what we can do is add a button for clearing the glider cache. Because that will definitely be useful at some point. And who knows, you may want to rebuild the entire glider cache for some reason. Um, where should we put it, though? Edit. Project settings, maybe? Under the physics tab? Like, just have a little button somewhere saying clear collider cache. Rebuild collider cache. Now, the question is do we recook this on play? We do it in C and Serializer, but that's it. Uh, we do it in Get or Create Collider Asset, which we will be using 
physics mesh cache. Okay, so the physics get mesh data does it, and we do call that when we hit play. But we may actually want to do that. Yeah, 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 okay. I think we can do this if we go into product, project settings. Let's have it be here. We'll do a new property grid. And we'll have a button. Clear. Collider, cash, or rebuild maybe. Yeah, let's call it rebuild. Physics, uh, system, or maybe the mesh cache. Because I think it's just the mesh. Get mesh ca cache, and it's a reference, so rebuild. Because that's really the only clutters we'll be caching kind of manually. Oh, we already have a way of clearing it. What's that do? It just calls clear. Okay. Rebuild. So, what this basically means we need to do is we need to first of all get rid of everything that's inside of the cache folder. Which is this. And I'm just gonna copy paste this because I'm lazy. I think this deletes folders as well. Sorry about that. Okay, we've deleted it. Um, now we need to rebuild it. So... We can probably just get... I think I know how to do this. We can do Asset Manager. Get Asset Registry. There. And that way we can go through all of the um, collider assets. But because we can have memory only assets, we also need to do uh, get memory only assets, which I hate. I wish I never created this, which returns to that. So we'll do const auto reference um, memory assets because 
our code shouldn't have to care if it's a memory only asset or not. At least not in this way. So I can't wait for Yon to rewrite it. Are memory only assets even used? Oh yeah, they're used. Um, I use them for the mesh collider assets. Um, at least like we mainly use them for more kind of dynamic assets. Um, I can actually go in and show kind of where they're used. Hoping this builds. Should. Um, so, first of all, they're used for um, the match collider if you don't create a an explicit asset on disk. We will create a memory only asset um, with kind of some default settings and use that instead. Um, and we also use them uh, for dynamic skies, right? So when you enable dynamic sky, we need to store that as an asset, but because it's a dynamic sky, we need to store it in memory only. So we use them there. And I think we use them in a couple other places as well. So they're definitely used. They're just not well implemented. And what we need to do is we need to loop through the asset registry, which holds a path and some metadata. So const auto reference file path metadata asset registry. We'll do if metadata type is not equal to mesh collider continue uh, it would be nice if we could filter this as well to only include certain assets but that's we could actually like write the asset manager to store the assets based on type but I don't know I'll have a word with you on to see if we can do that because that could potentially optimize some things um, otherwise we need to do Cooking a factory. Cook mesh. And the handle is metadata. That. Invalidate. Oh, we could also not do this. And then simply call invalidate old. Is that, that true? I guess that will also. That will just go ahead and do this instead of trying to deserialize it. I think we should do that because it will be handled a bit more gracefully. We may want to store a list of assets that we couldn't, of uh, colliders that we couldn't rebuild and show a little pop-up saying, hey, we can rebuild these. Although I don't see why we would ever not be able to rebuild one. But I guess let's just do this for now. Ah, uh, well. Fail to uh, rebuild collider patch for um, pure quaternion. You guys use physics, right? Yep, we use physics. That is correct.
And we'll do the same thing for memory only assets. But for memory only assets, it's the handle instead of the file bomb. We'll just do that. This won't actually be helpful to print, but it will let us know something is wrong. Sorry, what? That returns the actual asset. Do that instead. Okay. Let's see if this works. Not sure why you would ever actually need to rebuild it completely. Um, well, I guess if you may need to do that if we modify some of the internal code in such a way that it breaks it, like we might end up doing with the um, collider types rebuild. That seems to have worked. Went awfully quickly, though. I'm kind of suspicious. Yeah. Some of these did not actually get Deleted? Maybe because... Wait. Oh, I, I know why. Um, yeah. It's because I got rid of the deletion code. We may want to keep that in. Because that can be quite handy for clearing out um, colliders that no longer are needed. So let's do if not all system delete get cache. Um, fail to delete collider cache. And then fail. Now, if we delete the directory, we will need to do create cache directory if needed as well. Although I think Cook Mesh already does that. Yeah, it does. So we don't actually need to bother with that. Now it should work. Yeah, I mean, you can see we only have three. Is that correct? I feel like that may not be correct. That looks shady to me.
but I guess maybe it's not. Yeah, that definitely looks kind of shady. By the way, in Unity, if you have no kinematic reader body, the damage collider has to become next. Yeah, um, that's definitely true because that's the limitation of physics. What's up with the collider of that board? Oh, it doesn't have one. Why does it not have one? Uh, yeah, so the reason why non-kinematic rigid body um, must have a convex mesh collider is um, because physics requires that. What's the entity called? Notice board. Which should have... It doesn't have a collider at all. That feels like a bug. Now we could just give it a box collider. And I think the nose board didn't have one when you released the game. Yeah, I don't think so. Because in the repo, it doesn't have one either. Which is interesting. Maybe it interferes with this one. Potentially, that's why. Because this should definitely have like a box collider. I'm just gonna check because it's possible that Tim didn't have this because they wanted yeah it does interfere with this um but like we could have easily done fixed that by setting it to something really small and then moving it back a bit so doing like point 0.1 and offsetting it just a bit Because, yeah, that does mean it's... Because I think that should let us just... Yeah. And we still, like, can't walk through it. So that's a bug. Should probably... Well, it's not a bug, it's just something we forgot to do, I guess. Interesting. So, okay, it didn't have one. That's fine. If I go and just show all, yeah, and things like the houses don't have colliders for some reason, but I think that was also the case previously. But the weird thing is we use a lot of mesh colliders. So why are they not being cooked? and saved. So we come in here and like, no matter what, this should always happen. And if the file doesn't exist, we write to it. So what's up with that? There's definitely something strange happening here. Because we are cooking 
a bunch of meshes here. But they're not actually being serialized. We're not getting any errors. extension HPM oh also that's that's a big problem we have the same extension for physics colliders as we do for physics materials that's a... not Great. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to change the extension of these guys to be Hazel Mesh Collider. Because that is definitely not correct. <laughs> okay. Now let's check. change the header as well. Because that doesn't... Like, we don't ever serialize box colliders and things like that. We only do... Uh, regular mesh colliders. And now all of a sudden we have a bunch of... HMC files. And let's get rid of those. But when I go and rebuild Glider Cache, we lose most of them. That's a problem. Because that means something about this code is completely wrong. So, I'm gonna have to launch this in debug mode. One other thing we need to do is... Oh, I think I know what's happening, actually. I think I know this. We need to clear as well. That could actually be 
the cause here because it still detects uh, the the um, cooking factory still detects these as kind of being cached, and so it doesn't try and cache them. So that's probably what's happening here. And I'm hoping it is, because that means I won't have to launch debug mode. Rebuild. No, of course not. Of course not. And you see, we, we're also like, not cooking all of them. Even though they clearly have mesh colliders. So, okay, I'm gonna have to launch debug mode. Fun. Because they're going through and cooking all of these, which makes a lot of sense. Okay, now we have 14 files. Um... Memory assets we do have a bunch of, so it's possible we don't have all of the... Hmm. Okay. So, this is one, two, three. Yeah! I think I'm forgetting to set the, uh... So this is... wrong? Somehow? So we don't have it here. So it's most likely a memory asset. And so we check mesh component, static mesh component. And we create a memory only asset. So this has the wrong metadata type. Do we not have metadata? We may not actually have metadata for... Memory-only assets, which is a pain. Why? Yeah, we just... This is not a thing. So this would actually be asset... Yet asset type. I'm getting more and more annoyed with these memory-only assets. Because I'm pretty sure if we no we stop find all the references to this
Hello? Stop freaking out. That's fine. No, wait. It's this one. That's fine. Okay, so I guess that's the only place where we actually tried to get the metadata. So this should have fixed it. Yeah, memory assets don't seem to be... We definitely need to need an asset manager rewrite. Okay, we have 14 files. We rebuild, and that did seem to take a bit longer, and it we can see a lot more of them being cooked here. Feels like it's more of an acid handle problem. No, I don't like the thing is an acid handle. We, we kind of determined that asset handles are literally just a value. Now we could of course implement them differently and have them have like an arrow operator. Absolutely. Yeah, this definitely worked. Um, but it's not so much the asset handle that's an issue, right? Because it's literally just the API Right, how I decided to implement memory only assets because we have a separate map whereas they can literally just be a part of either loaded assets or even the asset registry right and the thing is because this asset registry stores metadata and we even have a boolean in here that says is memory asset which I guess just isn't used anymore. So it's more like the overall structure of the entire asset manager needs a change because the API is terrible. The underlying implementation is not great because we index by a file path, whereas this should be by handle instead of, right? And the path should literally just be metadata right because this won't work when we actually build the assets into a better kind of binary dump format because we won't be referencing files we'll be referencing actual data by handle yeah the, the whole map of paths i think is kind of left over from the original asset manager because here's the thing i I wrote this asset manager, but I didn't write the initial implementation. That was written by Electron Diffuser. How do you even hash that? Oh, you hash a file path. I mean, it's just a string. You can definitely hash strings. Um, but yeah, so Electron Diffuser did the initial implementation and I kind of took his implementation and just not wrote on top of it, but I did keep quite a... Yeah, but that that's the thing. Um, as the default system path handles pretty much all of the edge cases, right? It takes whatever path you give and formats it to be in a much better implementation well it stores it in a more optimal way and because this is platform dependent it also means it will automatically replace forward slash with backslashes on windows and the same thing on um, 
like Linux, it will replace backslashes with forward slashes. But yeah, no, this is definitely not good because it's slower to hash a string compared to hashing, you know, a 64-bit integer. Um, so it's not particularly optimal. And obviously it doesn't make any sort of sense because during like a runtime, you wouldn't have, you know, a .gltf file on disk. You'd have some kind of custom format file or maybe not even a file, it could literally just be a part of a single binary dump. So this obviously makes no sense at all, but Jan is going to rewrite it. Right, so rebuilding the physics cache now works. Which means that if we were to go and change this to this we'd have to rebuild the physics cache and it would just handle it right it would update everything to be kind of mostly correct Okay. Cool. And yeah, I don't want to make this change yet. Uh, completely unrelated, but when running forest, it was crashing if the path where I unzipped the game has several characters. That does not surprise me. Uh, Dimitri Maximov Galara, thank you for following. Yeah, um, we do not currently handle file paths properly everywhere. Um, there are a lot of places where we just use std string, which obviously is only Unicode. Well, no, it's not Unicode, it's ASCII characters. Um, the correct way is to use std file system path because that does handle. Um, basically all character types because they use wide chars instead of regular strings um not sure because with a file path um you can also call dot string to convert to an std string and i don't know if that that would probably cause problems um As you see, like project path is a string view. We t we try and cast the um, the project path. Like we just take it in like this. It should be a std file system path. That's most likely why you're getting that crash so early on. Um. And I don't know why whoever did this decided to do it, do it as a string view. That's just dumb. Because obviously normal strings cannot handle non-ASCII characters. So this should definitely be like this. No, it was later because I got the GPU extension on. You did? Well, let's take a look. Okay, that's not the file I wanted. Um, most likely it's something in... Well, it, it definitely has to do with file paths though. And it's definitely the fact that we're not using SD file paths everywhere. So, we definitely should fix that. 
I can probably very easily reproduce it by, I don't know. Like, I think if I were to rename this to have, well, let's make a duplicate. No. Duplicate. Let's rena rename it like that. So now we actually have Swedish characters in that name. That should cause a crash. Because we don't handle it. I don't think. And yeah, I'm just doing this to... I'm not gonna bother fixing it, because it would take probably like a couple of days to go through everything. Um, but I just wanna see if I get the crash. I should. And once I've tested this, I'm probably going to go ahead and end the stream and go and have a bite to eat because I'm getting hungry. And I won't be able to do these two until I've had a word with Jan and probably Cyrex as well. Okay, so it didn't crash, but obviously I'm GUI doesn't recognize the characters. I'm surprised that we did not get a crash. So... Apparently the asset manager and the content browser does handle those characters correctly. But something else isn't. But it kind of has to be... The thing is, it has to be something related to the project bot. Okay? Now, it might not be there, but it could be... Um... Where we... Try and load the project, maybe? Could be in runtime layer. That's a possibility. When we call open project and try and deserialize it. Because, well, no, these do take. Yeah, you don't have to do that. We're we're definitely going to go through and kind of fix this up um, eventually. So we should probably get to that rather quickly, since we we're actually starting to release games, and people do not always use ASCII characters. So, but well, yeah. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and end the stream and have something to eat. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be streaming anything during uh, the weekend. We'll see. Might play some games. I've been playing a lot of uh, Stellaris recently, which is I'm quite enjoying that. But yeah, um, probably do some more programming streams next week um maybe if i can manage to get jan's kind of opinion on these two well yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and end here and hopefully i'll see you guys next week if not this weekend so bye bye have a good night